so the part two continuation so here is your uh, deep auricular anterior tympanic okay middle meningeal accessory meningeal and the last one coming down is inferior angular so this uh, middle meningeal goes via foramen spinosum and the accessory meningeal goes via foramen ovate so near that only you have the spine of the sphenoid so that's why the accessory meningeal is related to tensor velocity and levator velocity because spine of the sphenoid is related to these two muscles and then inferior alveolar nerve inferior alveolar nerve passes through the foramen and along with which nerve uh, artery inferior alveolar artery passes through the mandibular foramen and it is lying along the inferior alveolar nerve and this inferior alveolar artery gives artery to medial pterygoid so these are the points in favor of the inferior alveolar artery and uh, so ramus of the mandible um, between the lamus and the sphenopalatine ligament so this artery is lying between the ramus and the sphenopalatine that important point you should write between the ramus and the sphenomandibular ligament everywhere you have to write sphenomandibular ligament then uh, it enters into the mandibular foramen and gives an artery to mylohyoid runs along with the inferior alveolar nerve that's all about the inferior alveolar artery then la next division is branches of the part two that is full of muscular branches so each muscle what are the branches that you have to write deep temporal artery masseteric artery pterygoid artery okay and then next one is buccal buccal artery okay these are the branches from the second part each artery just write temp temporal bone the temporalis muscle pterygoid muscle like that okay next is your third part third part only it is very important third part full after it enters into the pterygopalatine fossa it is called as third part the first branch after entering into the pterygopalatine fossa is your posterior superior alveolar artery posterior superior alveolar artery again comes out through the pterygopalatine fissure through the pterygopalatine fissure and then it comes uh, and uh, near the maxillary tuberosity and supplies the posterior part of the alveoli finished so this is about the posterior superior alveolar artery second artery it goes via so you know this is the pterygopalatine fossa and the pterygopalatine fissure it is entering through that here is our uh, mandible the maxilla this is the maxillary tuberosity so first it enters inside and then it gives the branch the branch again it comes out through the fissure and then supplies the maxillary tuberosity and the alveoli upper part of the alveoli okay so it has to enter inside because after entering inside only it is called as third part of the maxillary artery from there again through the pterygopalatine fissure it comes out and supplies near the area of the maxillary tuberosity and supplies this is the alveoli right your teeth so comes and supplies the posterior part of the alveoli and the as well as the maxillary or sinus posterior part and the next branch is it goes up via the infra orbital foramen is there so inferior orbital fissure is there and then next is your canal so this fissure is called inferior orbital fissure so it goes via the inferior orbital fissure and then takes it infra orbital canal infra this is infra orbital canal when it lies in the infra orbital canal it gives two branches called middle superior alveolar and anterior superior alveolar alveolar artery then it enters into that and then comes out as infra orbital through the infra orbital foramen it comes out as infra orbital artery this infra orbital artery supplies the lower part of the uh, uh, cheek cheek it has supplies the cheek and the lateral part of the nose okay and lower eyelids everywhere okay this like this it has to you have to draw okay so first is infra so, so first branch posterior superior alveolar artery second infra orbital inferior orbital fissure it goes via that and then through the infra orbital canal it comes out as infra orbital artery when it was traversing the inferior orbit uh, infra orbital canal it gives middle superior alveolar and anterior superior alveolar finished now it has to go inside deep and 
comes out as phenopalatine artery. These are the terminal branches. Phenopalatine artery and greater palatine artery. Sphenopalatine artery is phenopalatine near the nose, posterior part of the nose. So it gives posterior nasal branches. And then greater palatine artery gives lesser palatine arteries. Okay, these branches are all supplying the nasal septum. Finished. So these are. Then last posteriorly it gives branches to the number one pharyngeal artery, number two artery to pterygoid canal, okay that is all these two branches pharyngeal artery and artery to pterygoid canal. Artery to pterygoid canal traverses along with nerve to pterygoid canal. It anastomos with all the branches, pharyngeal branches, sphenopalatine branches, anastomos with pharyngeal and sphenopalatine. Okay. And then this pharyngeal artery is go via, via palato vaginal canal. One point is enough. Okay, that's all. This all the branches about the third part. So third part is very simple. So kindly keep it in mind. It enters and then only it comes out as posterior superior alveolar number one. Second infraorbital, infraorbital branches only middle superior alveolar and anterior superior alveolar. These supply the anterior part of the maxillary sinus and the anterior part of the alveoli. And then the third one is going medially for terminal branches, sphenopalatine and greater palatine. Sphenopalatine only gives posterior nasal branches, greater palatine gives lesser palatine arteries and it all supplies the nasal septum. So nasal septum is having a rich blood supply because these arteries they anastomose with the ethmoidal arteries. So this area is more prone for bleeding, epistaxis. So clinical application you can write nasal septum epistaxis. Epistaxis is bleeding to the, through the nose. So, uh, when these arteries join with the ethmoidal arteries and the superior labial arteries. And then the uh, important other two important branches are pharyngeal artery, palato through, goes through palato vaginal canal and artery to pterygoid canal, uh, goes along with nerve to pterygoid canal and anastomos with pharyngeal and sphenopalatine branches. That is all about the third part. So, first part clinical application when there, were, there is uh, dislocation that first part of the artery will be disturbed because it is coming near the neck of the mandible this is the horizontal part second part is the oblique part oblique part so many i mean uh, first the first part also you have lot of things to write and the second part nothing is there to write because all are muscular branches very simple third part only clinical applications are there because it, it supplies the maxillary air sinus it is very important and here nasal septum important blood supply